Hi guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I am here at the Stadium of Light today. So uh, a change from the norm on a Friday, but obviously one, we've got the big game tomorrow, Sunderland against Newcastle First Derby in eight, almost eight long years. I remember the last one, um, I was covering it and uh, feeling a little bit old today. But secondly, here today to talk about the story that is obviously um, been across all the back pages of the newspapers, it's been all across social media over the last 24 hours and it's got fans of all clubs, all football clubs talking because I suppose it's the um, nightmare scenario for Sunderland fans and the dream scenario for Newcastle fans who've been laughing uh, probably solid for 24 hours and Sunderland fans are left, well from the, the fans I've spoken to here at the stadium today, absolutely apoplectic at what their, uh, their club have done with regards to the Newcastle decoration and signage in the hospitality suite in that north stand over there right in the background the north stand of course newcastle will have that entire north stand to themselves tomorrow for the the derby match as i say the first derby in, there, in nearly eight years and the hospitality suite that's in the middle of that so look i'm going to try and i spoke to a, a few people involved in this and tried to get to the, the bottom of this and I'm, I'm going to try and bring to you guys exactly what i understand to, to have happened. It's a difficult one if you're a, a Sunderland fan or someone who works in the club because they'll be absolutely reeling just now but for Newcastle I suppose for the Newcastle fans they just need to sit there and not say anything. I mean Eddie Howe didn't touch on it today at his news conference and the club haven't said anything either because I, I suppose as far as they're concerned they just can kind of sit there and, and let it unfold and for me it feels like they go into this one already certainly off the pitch with a one goal lead before a ball, a ball is kicked. So as far as I understand, um, let's take it back to the start. Newcastle have got 6,000 fans travelling tomorrow, all going to be housed in that north stand there. Within that stand, as I've touched on already, is that uh, hospitality suite called Black Cat's Bar. It holds, I think it's just over 700 Newcastle fans. Now, Sunderland know they can't get access to that because all their fans are in the other side of the stadium. There's no way of them getting in. So, to make, so for Sunderland to make sure they made money out of that, they decided to give the hospitality suite to Newcastle and allowed them to sell the tickets to their, their fans. Now, um, my understanding is they would normally cost less than £100 for a Sunderland fan there on a match day. They're charging Newcastle £600 uh, each for, for a ticket and Newcastle have snapped up the majority of those tickets is around 700 in that hospitality suite which shows just how desperate they are to be here at this match at the Stadium of Light tomorrow. So firstly, it feels like they are rinsing uh, Newcastle fans but obviously there's, a, there's an appetite, there's a market there and Newcastle fans are snapping them up so part of me thinks well you can't really, really blame Sunderland too much for, for doing that despite me saying £600 is absolutely ridiculous for a, a match ticket these days and you know if Newcastle were to lose tomorrow I think the fans would be like that would be the biggest waste of money ever but look fans have been willing to, to spend that so Sunderland as a club knew there was an appetite there for Newcastle so they've you know you can do the maths yourself and work out how much they're going to make out of that over 700 tickets and £600, uh, £600 a pop um, they've made money already and I think this comes twofold firstly um, they felt that they were worried about the damage and potential vandalism to their fixtures and fittings, their walls. There's lots of Sunderland colour, Sunderland um, artwork and slogans on the walls. So they were worried about that. So they said to Newcastle, look, you need to provide the cover up. You need to provide whatever it takes to ensure that the place doesn't get damaged because we should not be fit footing that bill. So they've said to Newcastle, you need to cover the cost of this. I think, as I understand, as I understand and as I've been told, Newcastle were surprised about this because I think if it was the other way around, they probably would cover it themselves and make sure everything was, was protected. But um, they were surprised and they said reluctantly, OK, we will we will cover the, the walls. Um, and, you know, noises from Newcastle are that they told Sunderland before Christmas how they were going to do it and it was signed off by Sunderland but on the flip side of that noises from Sunderland are that yes they said Newcastle were to do that but they one wanted to see it first and two said they wanted it to be in neutral tones and neutral colours. Newcastle uh, as I understand it did not did not they refute that and they, they feel that it was signed off so look the truth probably will lie somewhere in the middle but one club are saying one thing and the other club are, are saying the other um, but aside from that Sunderland have seen this as an opportunity to make a little bit more money out of Newcastle. They're probably thinking, why should we pay £2,000, £3,000, whatever it is, to cover the walls when it's Newcastle's duty and duty of care to you know, protect the area and to make sure their, their fans don't cause any, any damage. So look, they've tried to make a few extra quid out of this and it's backfired hugely. 
because now um, at Sunderland and their fans have just said this to me, I've interviewed a couple of them, a laughing stock of, of um, English football because any football fan who saw that yesterday will be aligned to it, every football fan will, will understand how the Sunderland fans felt yesterday and probably a little bit understand how the Newcastle fans feel and understand exactly why they're kind of laughing ahead of today's game, so uh, tomorrow's game should I say. So. Um, what then happened yesterday was that um, the Newcastle team arrived, some people from Newcastle arrived to do the, the artwork and they were allowed into the stadium to, to do that. Um, I don't think that the people probably who were on the door here were aware exactly what they were going to do, the message wasn't passed and um, obviously pictures then emerged on social, on social media. So had those pictures not have emerged, it probably would have gone under wraps and it wouldn't have been a big issue, but because they emerged yesterday, 48 hours before the, 48 hours before the game, it's got everyone talking about it and it's been made more of a story. So yeah, the social media thing has probably killed it as far as Sunderland are concerned. And I think there's been a huge error of judgment as far as, as they are concerned. Like whether they told Newcastle to do it in neutral tones or whether they told them to um, ensure that it was checked first, in my opinion, they shouldn't have been allowing Newcastle to come in and decorate the, the room. Like it's, it's essentially allowing people you don't like to come to your house ahead of a party that you don't want them to be there and saying, you can come in and decorate my house before you come because I don't want you making a mess of the current wallpaper. You don't know what they're going to put up. So um, yeah, it's a bloody nose for Sunderland. I think a lot of um, inexperience, they'll learn from this. It probably shows, you know, Sunderland have been away from the, the top flight for a long time now. And there's perhaps people involved in the club who aren't Sunderland fans through and through and probably haven't experienced the derby and what it means and everything that carries along with it. So look, I think, uh, as I say, a bloody nose, a real lesson for, for, for Sunderland and, you know, it's left them in a really difficult situation and that I feel is given Newcastle a little bit of an edge ahead of the derby and has put the, the concentration um, on... Sunderland when really everyone was probably looking at Newcastle in the build up to it, a lot of my Newcastle United supporting mates worried about this game, nervous because they feel like they're onto a, onto a losing situation and that's a win-win for, for Sunderland and Sunderland have got a free hit but this has very much turned ever, turned the tables a, a, little, a little bit and put, put the attention on, on Sunderland now and um, it's a Sorry state for them, I have to say, but it's given us a lot to talk about over the last 24, 48 hours or so. So um, that is it as far as I'm concerned. Um, obviously, Newcastle saying one thing, Sunderland saying the other, but the long and short of it is Sunderland allowed Newcastle to come in, decorate the room ahead of it because they did not want to pay for the decorations. And I think they also felt that by charging £600 a ticket for the game, they were doing Newcastle and the fans a favour by saying, look, you can have the, the room as you, as you want it to be. So... Um, Look, I think they'll learn from this. Um, I think, I think for all concerned at Sunderland, there'll be real issues here. You know, I'd imagine questions are being asked behind the scenes. Whether well, owner Kiro Louis Dreyfus has, has already said that, um, and I don't think this would have happened if it'd been the other way around at, at Newcastle. They've had a lot of big games, particularly in the Champions League, Cup finals, and stuff in, in recent years, and recent weeks even. And um, I think Newcastle have kind of moved to a, a situation now where there's uh, probably a lot more professionalism behind it scenes and you know this maybe shows that Sunderland have been away from the Premier League for, for, for a long time so um, that's the truth that's that's where we are and um, it wasn't that Sunderland staff painted it in Newcastle colours for a laugh they were just allowed access to do it Sunderland say that it was to be checked first and it was to be in neutral colours uh, Newcastle the feeling from Newcastle is that it was signed off before Christmas and they knew exactly what was going to happen so it feels like there's been a miscommunication there on the Sunderland side of things a disconnect and it's led to you know a story that as um, I think it was Marco Gabbiadini said on uh, Total Sport last night we'll probably be talking about in 50 years time and I've been talking about it for the last 24 hours so anyway um, that's uh, from me I didn't think we'd be talking about that ahead of the derby I thought we'd be talking about team affairs and team selection and stuff. Very last thing to note is that Keenan Trippier, late fitness test today Callum Wilson definitely out for the game but talking to Eddie Howe this morning uh, he will go as strong I think as he possibly can because he knows the magnitude and how much this means to, to the supporters. So that's it from me guys, leave your comments below, I'm sure you've got lots to say on this and uh, give us a, a follow, do subscribe and um, I'll see you in the next one after the derby tomorrow who will win, let's wait and see